Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are whipping up a lovely soothing, creamy facial cleanser. So this facial cleanser was inspired by a first aid beauty product. I read some really glowing reviews of it on a Reddit thread at some point in time this year, and went and took a look at the ingredients and kind of went, I don't have most of these ingredients, but I can kind of see what's going on here. So let's see what I can make myself. This creamy cleanser uses a blend of three surfactants for cleansing. There is some anionic sodium cocal isothionate, some non-ionic caprylyl and caprylyl glucoside, and some amphoteric cocoa mitopropyl betaine. The glucoside and the betaine are both liquid, and the sodium cocal isothionate is a solid. We're using it in a very fine powdered format so that it incorporates easily. If yours is a chunkier powder or sticks, you can grind it up or smash it up in order to use it in this formulation just please for the love of your lungs and airways make sure you are wearing a very well fitting dust mask so you don't gag and choke and just inhaling powdered surfactants is horrible so yeah wear that dust mask <laughs> The creamy bit comes from three ingredients. We have some glycerol stearate SE, which is our emulsifier and also a lovely emollient, and then some stearic acid and some cetyryl alcohol, both of which are lovely emollients and also contribute quite a lot of thickness and body to this face wash. For soothing goodness, we have some aloe vera juice, some elantoin, and some calendula extract. If you'd like to learn more about this formulation, please make sure you are reading the blog post, which is linked in the description box below. There's a lot more information there, including information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, the equipment I'm using, where to buy ingredients, and just a whole lot more. So please make sure you are giving that a read. But come on, let's go get started. We're going to begin by pre-distributing our xanthan gum in some vegetable glycerin. So in the bottom of this small beaker, I have 0.15 grams of xanthan gum. And to that, I'm going to add seven and a half grams vegetable glycerin. Up next, we will add our surfactants. So you need two grams of caprylyl and caprylyl glucoside, one and a half grams cocomitopropyl betaine. And then our last ingredient here is three and a half grams of sodium cocal isothionate. And make sure you're putting your dust mask on because you don't want to inhale it as it gets sort of tossed around. But we're going to add it to our beaker and then stir to combine and, and wet everything out. And the last ingredients for this phase, we're going to need 13.85 grams distilled water, 15 grams aloe vera juice, and 0.05 grams citric acid. Make sure you have a nice precise scale for weighing that out. If you don't, please make sure you are referring to the blog post. I've included some instructions on how to create a stock so that you can weigh that out accurately. Our heated oil phase is comparatively simple. We'll need one and a half grams glycerol stearate SE, and the SE part is important. Don't just use regular glycerol stearate. Two grams stearic acid, and one and a half grams cetyryl alcohol. Before we continue, I'm going to weigh the water phase and note that weight, making sure to note that the weight also includes the glass stirring rod. This will allow us to replace any water lost to evaporation during the heating phase after the heating is done. To heat everything through, I'm going to put both phases in a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go pop this on the stovetop until the uh, oil phase is all melted and everything is heated through to the same temperature. Once everything has heated through and melted, you can remove your water bath from the heat. And now I'm going to take out the heated water phase and I'm going to weigh it and then top up any water lost to evaporation with a bit of preheated distilled water. Now I'm going to pour the water phase into the oil phase and it's pretty important that you do it this way simply because the oil phase is uh, very prone to solidifying. And so if you kind of uh, try to pour it out, I find that you don't do a great job of getting all of it out of your beaker and it kind of sticks to your stirring uh, implement as it solidifies. And yeah, it's just, it's much easier to do it this way. Bit of a stir there, remove it from the heat. And now I'm going to use my mini mixer to combine. So once it, comes together like that and you've given it a decent blend, kind of in my experience, as long as you're giving this a bit of a stir every now and then as it cools, it, uh, it stays together perfectly fine. Um, for more information on that mixer I used, please make sure you are referring to the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. There is an entry for it in there. 
Well, we let the mixture cool, kind of giving it a stir every couple minutes. We're going to add our cool down phase. So I have a small dish here on a nice precise scale. So we're going to start with 0.2 grams allantoin, 0.25 grams vitamin E, half a gram optifin plus, and half a gram calendula extract. Once our cleanser has cooled, we're going to incorporate our cool down phase. So I'm going to transfer a small amount of the cleanser to the dish with the cool down phase, and then we're going to thoroughly blend and then transfer it back to the parent batch. Now, before we package it up, we're just going to check the pH. With the citric acid included, it should be where we need it to be, but we need to check it anyways to make sure that our preservative will work. So I'm going to transfer two grams of the cleanser into this little dish and then add 18 grams of water to create a 10% dilution. To test the solution, I'm going to use my pH meter and for details on the meter I have, please make sure you're reading the blog post. So I'm just giving it a swish in some distilled water and kind of just gently dry off the outside with a bit of clean paper towel. I'm gonna fire this up. I'm gonna tip the dish so that it's deep enough to uh, submerge the probe and then give a little bit of a stir, submerge, and wait for the little happy face to appear. All right, I just got the happy face at 5.22, which is great. Uh, for Optifin Plus, you want the pH to be below six, and then 5.22 is a nice sort of mildly acidic pH, which is great for our acid mantle. Just rinsing off the pH meter, turn it off and then put it away. So for packaging, I'm going to use this 50 milliliter soft squeeze tube from Yellow Bee. Just disassemble it there so you can see that there's a fillable orifice there. And in order to fill it up, we are going to use a syringe. So despite how it might look on camera, filling these things is always a little awkward and a little bit messy. So don't feel bad if it's not just this like gorgeous straight shot filling the tube. Uh, something that I definitely find helps is to squeeze the soft tube before lining the, um, the syringe up so that the, there's room in the tube. It's not just full of air because oftentimes the syringe is really going to plug the, the orifice. So you kind of want a little bit of a vacuum down here so you can and have a nice relatively easy mess free transfer. And for a bit of a use demo, we will clean off the spatula here. Now, consistency wise, this is definitely a lot kind of gummier than I would want for a lotion, but it's really nice in a cleanser. It offers really great slip. And grab a larger amount here to sort of show that's about how much I would use to wash my face with. And there you go. So you can see kind of a creamy, low lather, really lovely slip and leaves my skin feeling clean, but not tight or stripped, which is exactly what we want in a facial cleanser. And there we go. So we just made a gorgeous, soothing, creamy facial cleanser. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading the full blog post for this DIY. It's linked in the description box below. There you'll find a lot more information on it, information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, and a whole lot more. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.